Welcome to the Christian Sheepreneur Podcast. My name is Angel Santos, business coach and marketing expert. And today I am here to talk about how to host a discovery call um, and why should you have them? If you are anything like me and most coaches, consultants, service providers, I could go on, uh, you know, physical trainers, I could accountants, I could go on. Um, most new entrepreneurs, even seasoned entrepreneurs, don't like sales calls. They don't like discovery calls. It's like, no, I don't want to get on the phone with people. I would much rather just, you know, some people are really heavy on DMing. Some people are prefer emails, right? Everyone has something different. Um, And I'm not, I am not going to tell you that the only way you can sell is to have a sales or a discovery call because there are a lot of ways you can sell. What I will tell you is that short of in-person connection, having a call with someone, whether it's on the phone or a Zoom call, but having that real time connection with someone where they can get a feel for you, where they can get their questions asked in real time, where you can see if it's a video call, how they're responding, you know, if they're saying one thing, but something else is going on. Short of being in person and meeting them and talking with them, an online call is the next most effective way of that type of communication. Now, are there ways to replicate that process? Yes, there are. But we're not getting into that today. Today, we're getting into how to do a sales call. And I want to get into this because um, I have, you know, this is year five in my business as a coach. And um, I've tried a lot of different things, right? I've used scripts um, that worked. I've used scripts that didn't work. I, um, have freestyled it. Um, and you know, different people have different methods. You know, there's the, uh, Grant Cardone method to not let them get off until you get a yes, if at all possible, <laughs> right? Uh, sell or be sold to all of the Grant Cardone, uh, fans out there or followers. Um, you know, they're, they're the people who are very kind of, hands off. It's like, you know, I'm just here to talk, you know, what's the best decision for you? They're very low pressure, right? And and not like in an insincere way, they're just very low pressure. Some people are so low pressure, they don't even really tell you the benefits of the program because they don't want to come off as pushy. And so as someone who has um, built a six figure online business and someone who has also as a consumer invested tens of thousands of dollars in other people's programs. I have had experience as a coach giving calls, hosting calls. And I've also had experience um, being on the other side, right? And because I am a coach, when someone is like bombing at a call, it's really awkward for me. Like I was on this one call, um, I was on this one call like two months ago. And when I tell you I wanted to sign up for this program, I wanted to sign up for the program. And I actually signed up two months later. This person sales call delayed me two months. I had already before I get and I'm telling you this story because it will help you, especially it'll let you know if you're doing this right. If you're guilty of this, if you're guilty of this, no judgment, but please stop. So I had already read, you know, this person's program information. I'm definitely one of those. By the time I get on a call with you, I can tell you everything on your about your program. I can tell you what's on your sales page, what's on your website. That's just who I am. So I get on the call, I have very specific questions. And the person who to me, you could tell was going by a script, kept trying to stay to her script. But she was like talking about things that I already knew. And I felt like it was wasting time. And it also felt very impersonal because you're not even listening to me enough to have a conversation. Now, don't get me wrong. I have no issues with people who use skips, use a process. It works for you. I get it. But if the person, which I did, has literally said, oh, yeah, I saw that in one of your videos about scripts for sales calls. But could we just have a conversation? 
you know, I wasn't I wasn't rude about it, but I really just wanted like I had real questions that had not been answered on the sales page. That's what I wanted to talk about. And instead, this person insisted on sticking to her script like she could barely even hear me and taking me through the sales page. She was literally like, OK, yes, I know, you know, you have questions, but um, can I tell you about the benefits and what's included? I already knew that. But did she ask? She didn't. So don't do that. <laughs> Before I get into how to do it, let's talk about how not to. Don't get so involved if you're going to use a script that you're not listening to the person, right? If the person says, I don't have a lot of time and you know your script takes 90 minutes, maybe you say, hey, okay, you know, for this to really be effective, we need about an hour. So would you like to reschedule? Does that make sense? Or if you're going to shorten it, have a way to shorten it. Don't still try to slow them down. And they're obviously kind of in a hurry. Um, so that's the first thing is do not stick to a script so closely that you can actually listen and have a conversation. And the second thing is to be a human, which to me <laughs> still goes back to the first thing. Like when you are talking to a friend, right? Which to me, that's how you should approach sales and discovery calls. If you are talking to a friend, you have your friend's best interest at heart. Let's say, because all a sale is, is convincing someone of something, right? You sell all the time, more than you realize. If you've convinced your husband or your children to go out to a restaurant or to take a vacation at a place you chose, or if you've convinced a friend recently to uh, you know, try a brunch place or read a book you read, or you told someone all the benefits of this massage place you went to and you're like, oh no, you gotta try it. They did this and this and this, and it helped me so much because this, this, and this. And yeah, the price was this, but you know, we deserve it you're selling you're selling you're convincing them of an idea that you have right you're confident because you believe it that's all a sales call is at the heart of it right now let me tell you a lot of times I feel like people hype it up into way more because again they want you to buy their 10 and twenty thousand dollar program where they're going to teach you the same foundational principles that I'm telling you now. Now, I am not sharing principle because there are ways, unfortunately, to manipulate someone, like to try to manipulate someone into buying. But I would never share that because that's out of integrity. And you won't, it won't end well. When you manipulate people into buying something, um, normally they're not happy with the product. And so they're not going to give you a review and they're just going to spread their experience with other people. But when you show up as a real person who cares, you talk to them like a friend and see if it's a good fit. If it's a good fit, tell them why. If you are being genuine, they will feel that it will come through. People can tell, right? Whenever I'm selling one of my programs, it's easy. Because I put, first of all, <laughs> I load my, like I create the programs that I would, that I could have purchased, right? So it's always going to be priced more than fair. It's always going to have like everything I would have wanted in it, right? And I normally throw in bonuses because I like bonuses, right? So I, and then that, that's just the format of the programs, but I also know how effective they are. They work. My clients often get results faster than they think, right? So that allows a confidence to be there. So when I, when someone is saying, well, oh, maybe I could use a credit card to pay for it or this or that, I'm not out of integrity with saying, okay, yeah, that will work. Why? Because I know within about 90 days, they're probably going to make it back and more. Not a lot of programs can say that, right? So it's easy for me to have a conversation about one of my programs because I know they work. I know I was in integrity building it. I know I care and sometimes more than a client about them getting the result, right, that they're investing in. I don't ever take someone investing in their pro uh, in one of my programs lightly, right? So it's 
easy. Because I'm coming from a place of integrity. Because I actually care. <laughs> I care about the success of, and growth of your business and, uh, as an entrepreneur. I care about you becoming a well-paid VA, right? And not having to charge just 15 or $20 an hour. And then you're having to pay taxes. And No, not in 2022, 20, <laughs> right? So... That's the first thing I'll give you kind of like a few step by steps in a second, but I just wanted to share that because I want to one, I want to take the pressure off. I know sometimes people can feel like, well, I'm, I, I won. I'm already nervous. You're probably already nervous about getting on a call and you probably feel like, well, I don't know how to do it. What do I say? What do I do at the heart of it, at the very basics of it? Have a conversation with them like you're having a conversation with a friend. Most of us are advocates, right? If we are trying to convince a friend of like, uh, let's just say a health program because we know that their health is declining and we've, we've experienced a program that we know will help them, we care. If they say, oh no, I'm not really interested, we're probably going to push because we care. Because we're willing to seem a little bit pushy for them to get better, right? It's the same principle. So the first step in having a discovery call, and this really does start before the actual call, the first step is to 100% believe in your offer. Believe in what you're selling. If you do not 100% believe in it, then you need to revisit it. If you are shaky, if you're not confident about something, you need to revisit it. Don't get on a call and um, try to convince someone to buy something that you're not convinced of already. It is imperative <laughs> that you are sure. You, are, you know this is it's a good deal. It's worth it. It's going to work. It's going to help them. You be sure first. Because if you're not sure, they won't be sure, right? So you be sure first. And if you're not, no shame, but let's revisit it first before we get on these calls, <laughs> right? And you want to be sure about the price. You want to be sure about what it includes. And that's not to say your price needs to come down. Maybe you just need to do some work to really uh, get com- uh, comfortable and confident about your pricing, right? Right? But be sure and be confident, right? Come from a place of integrity. Be 100% convinced. The second thing is be clear. So after you're sure, after you're convinced um, that it's a great product, be clear on the benefits, on how it's going to transform and change their lives, Right. If you're anything like I was in, you know, 2016 and when I first became a coach and even in my business, my nonprofit before 2016, when I would talk to people, I would tell them about the things that nobody cared about, unfortunately. But it's true. Nobody cares that it comes with, you know, at the beginning, most people, most people, the nerds like me, we care a little bit, but most people don't care about the process. They don't care about the how they're not as what I mean by don't care is they're more interested with how it benefits them than what it includes, right? It's great if, you know, you're going to create a website that's going to have the SEO built in and they're going to have, you know, two contact pages and three custom coded HTML page, right? Did I lose you just now? Because you're losing people. <laughs> What people are concerned about, the benefits of a website is not the actual website. The benefits are they'll be taken seriously as an entrepreneur. The benefits are they'll be able to charge online. The benefits are they'll be able to be found on Google and get more clients. Those are the benefits. The, the website being Kajabi or WordPress and having the latest graphics and being encoded with, you know, that no, that's not the benefits. And you might be excited about what you're selling and the how and the process and the features, but don't lead with that. Make sure you're super clear on what the benefits are in their language, right? 
If you know you're trying to get a friend to go see a movie and they're not big into action, but they're really big into like maybe the storyline of the relationships. The movie might have action in it, but what you're going to tell the person, oh yeah, so such and such, and they meet in this coffee shop, and then they talk, and then they exchange looks, right? You're going to lead with the part that's going to hook your friend. Same thing. In this conversation, you're going to want to lead with the benefits because that's what they want. That's what they're coming to you for. They're coming to you for a reason. They're coming to you for help. And they can't get the help. They can't get the transformation if you don't make a transaction. So again, you're not you're not being pushy by being an advocate for them. But the way you be an advocate is to be clear with you first on what the benefits are for them. So they know you're on their side. Um, the third thing is be honest. <laughs> be honest. If it's not the best fit, if it's not the best time, tell them and tell them why. Or if you think another program is better or something else that you offer, maybe you have a book and you also have a workshop and you think because of where they are now, um, the book is better. Recommend the book or maybe, you know, the workshop. Just be honest. If there is an area you see that they're lacking, be honest. They will respect you for your honesty. Um, I remember a few years ago, I was talking with a client. And at this time, this is when I was, I wasn't necessarily charging for coaching at the time. Um, but uh, a person had came to me for video marketing services. And, um, and I was like, okay, yeah, I can make some videos for you, right? Um, this was before I, you know, started coaching. And, um, and so she came to me and she was telling me, uh, you know, about the video she wanted. And I, and I had some questions and when she was telling me about her questions, I realized, you know, what she needed was not a marketing video. <laughs> she needed to restructure her whole company. She needed to cut expenses. You know, she needed to make some major changes, like if taking her money for a marketing video would have been a paycheck for me, but it would have been a disservice to her. It would have. And I told her that. I said, you know, if you want some consulting, we can start there. Um, but a video is not what you need right now. Like <laughs> we need to meet in a room and um, with a whiteboard and map out your business and how to make the changes and how to restructure. Like that's, that's what's needed right now. And she ended up um, actually... She actually became, that was 2016, she actually became my first official paying coaching client. So it, it didn't even happen like, uh, it wasn't even planned. It was fairly organic. You know, I just could see the issues, right? But even if she hadn't, like if that had went a different way, perhaps she hadn't assigned it up for my coaching program, but I didn't take her money and she went and hired someone else for the video she would have came to that realization on her own because how things were set up, that video wasn't going to help her, right? So at least, you know, perhaps in her future, if it had went a different way, maybe she would have looked me up then and had more respect for me than someone who will just sell you something because they want the, the short-term sale instead of that long-term relationship. So do be honest. And the fourth thing is, is don't be so, you know, don't be afraid to advocate. And I say advocate because push sounds aggressive. But if you know your service can help them, if you know it's exactly what they need, if you know you work with others and it's changed them, then don't be afraid to advocate. Don't be afraid to ask the questions. I do not keep it traditional when I'm on a call because I do care. So, you know, I might be on a call and I might ask someone, what's your budget right now? And, you know, some people wouldn't, but I'm aware that if your budget is limited and you don't have a source of income right now, well, maybe I can help you get another source of income so you can invest in your business, right? Um, I, I, if, if God puts a certain question in my heart, I will ask it. I will ask, you know, if it's okay, can I ask you this? I'm not afraid to get personal. 
Because first of all, coaching is a very personal relationship. I'm not afraid to get personal during a call. So that the questions you ask might change based on your industry. But if you hear a question pop up in your head or God gives you a question to ask them and you think, oh, no, it's not on my script or, oh, no, that's going to sound strange. There's a reason that question is popping up. Don't be afraid to dig deep. Don't be afraid to spend an hour with someone. Don't be afraid to be an advocate for them however you can. They will appreciate it. When people sign up for my programs, I often hear, I am so excited. This is an answer prayer. I have been looking. I have been waiting to find someone like you, right? And sometimes it can feel like, well, I'm spending an hour talking to them. If they really wanted it, it wouldn't take this long. That's not true. People can have doubts. They can have insecurities. They can have questions that have nothing to do with you. Maybe they don't understand quite how your program is going to help them. Maybe they're not sure it will work for them. Maybe it's work for your other clients, but will it work for them? Be an advocate. Don't take it personal if they have questions. Don't take it personal if they're, you know, asking to, you know, to see like a referral or they're asking for an example. Be willing to show them what you're saying. That's the next step. Be willing to show them. And what I mean is, if you're a personal trainer, pull up a clip of you working with the client, maybe, and show them. If you are, uh, you know, maybe you meal prep, show some pictures. Screen share and so share some pictures. It's so easy for people to talk about what they sell today. So whenever you can actually show people what you do, and I don't mean you have to show them, you know, five minutes of content or anything like that, but don't. Again, like you would a friend, if you're telling a friend about a restaurant, you're going to be like, look at this avocado toast, right? Isn't it pretty? It's okay to show them. And the last one, the last one is be generous with your time. Sometimes it takes more than one call, especially if it's a larger investment, right? If it's a four and five figure investment, some, not all the times, actually not all the times at all, but sometimes it might take more than one call. And so instead of getting irritated or, you know, blowing people off, if, you know, ignoring them, which, you know, to me, it's not good customer service anyway, (laughs) but instead of just kind of feeling like, well, if you're not convinced, you know, then I'm not for you. If you're not a fool, yes, then I'm a fool. No which to me can be coming from a place of ego, be an advocate. If you've had a call with them and they're messaging because they're if they're messaging you, <laughs> they're still interested. They probably have questions. Don't be afraid to say, hey, you know, saw you had a few more questions. Would you have time to hop on another call? Again, this is not a traditional approach to discovery calls. Y- I doubt you'll find a video like this anywhere else, but as someone who has, who works exclusively, um, you know, with women, as someone who has taught in person hundreds of um, entrepreneurs, as someone who has taught marketing to tens of thousands of online entrepreneurs, as someone who has built a six figure business from the ground up, which all things I'm so grateful to accomplish. Um, These are some of the things that I learned and I want to share them with you. Not so you feel overwhelmed. Don't feel like, okay, what she said I had to do needs to be honest. Like, let's do that anyway, first of all. (laughs) Um, But these are really things to, um, to just think about. And my hope and prayer is that they bring a more natural element into the conversation. I feel like sometimes we can take the humanity out of sales calls and discovery calls. And that's why selling gets a bad rap because instead of actually being an advocate and uh, letting someone know, like doing what you need to do so they believe, which like you do, that your product is the best fit for them because you honestly believe it's the best fit. That's what good selling is. 
Instead of that, sometimes what people do is they just try to manipulate someone into buying it just for the money. Well, obviously, we're not taking that approach. When you do the approach that I'm sharing, people will be excited to sign up with you. And that is what you want. Now, if you'd like to go deeper, um, I have an actual six <laughs> lesson module where I show examples of this in real time, where I kind of show you how to incorporate these principles um, easily and effectively, right? So you can, you know, do four and five figure sales if, if that's what's offered in your business with one call. Um, if you are interested in that, if you are, are interested in getting better at sales calls and discovery calls, um, if you are interested in using them to increase your income in your business, because it is a very effective way. It's still a very, very effective way to make money online. Or maybe even you're interested in like, okay, I hear you, but how do I get the calls? How do I get people to book the call with me? I teach all of this in my Christian business school program from A to Z, right? So if you feel like you're uncomfortable with it now and you want to become a pro so you can enjoy um, the sales and also enjoy getting the help to people once you have the sale, um, then click the link below to schedule a call with me <laughs> and we'll see if it's a good fit. And if it is, which it could be, right? I'll let you know. And if it's not, I'll let you know, right? Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, please leave them below.